balance that. We need some more people to sit over here. <laughs> Drinks. Oh. Awesome, 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 awesome. Wonderful. More people coming in. Zukai! Hamanana! Sweet. Just gonna stand in the back like the old deacons did. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> We're great. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Light and light to all he brings, risen healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that may no more may die. Born to raise us from the earth, born to give us second birth. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I want to kind of look to this side. Sorry for those of you online. We've squeezed everyone over and we've thrown everyone out of whack because everyone's on one side of the building today. It is great. I'm, I'm so glad to see you this morning. I hope you survived the frigid once in a generation weather event that we've had. It's been really cold. Uh, it's a little chilly this morning, but isn't it great to be here together to worship our God on Christmas Day? So. Glad you're here. Let's continue in worship. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for the King of angels. Oh, Joy 
to the world, the, the Lord, Lord is come. come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare in room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven. seated. Thank you, Lou. I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. He came to live, to live a perfect life. He came to be the living word of life. He came to die so we'd be he came to us to show his power and might, and that's why we praise him, that's why we sing, that's why we offer him our everything, that's why we bow down and worship this king, cause he gave. to live, to live, live again, again in us. us. He, he came, came to, to be our conquering King, King and friend. friend. He, he came, came to, to heal, heal and show the lost ones his love. He, he came, came to go, to prepare a place for us. And that's why we praise him. That's why we sing. That's why we offer him our everything. That's why we bow down and worship this king. Because he gave his everything. Because he gave his everything. Hello. Merry Christmas, guys. All right, I want to start this morning with a question for the kids, okay? Very important question. What is this? A present, what kind of present? It's a rectangle present. <laughs> Let's see, it's got some lights on it like you would put on a tree. Is it, what, is it a birthday present? Yeah. No. What a Christmas present. That's right. <gasps> yeah. Did you guys open some of these this morning? Yeah. You did. Jace? He got that cheetah. That's so exciting. You guys online can't see that. I'm sorry. But you can see this. All right. But let me ask you this. Second question. When you were opening these gifts, guys, hey, hey, guys. When you were opening these gifts, before you opened your first one, how'd you feel? You felt great? What else? Happy, yeah. Did you guys know what was inside? <laughs> Jay said no, he didn't know what was inside. So were you excited to see what it was? Yeah, you see, when we are about to open a present, we can't wait to see what's inside right? And we're so excited just to open this up and just, you know, peel back the wrapping. Well, just like being excited about these presents, the world was excited, waiting for something. 
In fact, all the way back to Adam and Eve, the world was waiting for something. Guys, I have one more question. Kiddos. Hey, Jace, Emsley, Logan, Hank. I have one more question. Do you remember what Christmas is really about? What, Logan? About God being born. About God being born. Yeah, Jace? Huh? Jesus' birthday. Yeah. Christmas is when we celebrate Jesus being born, right? Jesus coming to this earth, what the whole world was waiting for. So all the way back in Adam and Eve, I'm going to tell you guys a, a couple stories. Is that okay? Okay? All the way back to Adam and Eve, the world has been waiting for Jesus. Because you guys remember how God made everything good. He made the garden that was good. Adam and Eve were good. There was no sin. There were no problems. No one got hurt. No one got sick. No one died. But he said he had one rule, that they shouldn't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because if they did, that they would die. But do you guys remember what happened next when he told them not to eat from that tree? What happened? You're right, Logan. A snake came by, and he talked to Eve. And the serpent also, yeah, the snake, the serpent, whatever you want to call him, he came up to Adam and Eve and he said, hey, you're not actually going to die if you eat this fruit. You won't really die. And if you eat of it, you'll be like God. But the trick was they had already been made in the image of God. God made them to look like him already. And so they eat the fruit and they decide for themselves what's right and wrong. And it leads to sin. That's their sin, turning away from God and not trusting him. And so when that happens, you guys remember what happened. God sent them out of the garden. He said, because you've done this, there's going to be a curse now. A curse on you, a curse on the world because of what sin has done. But then he also talked to the serpent. And he said there's going to be a curse on the serpent too. So if we look at Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, God says this to the serpent. All right, listen to this, guys. The Lord God said to the snake, because you did this, a curse will be put on you. You'll be cursed more than any tame animal or wild animal. You will crawl on your stomach, and you'll eat dust all the days of your life. And then he said, I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. You will fight. Your descendants and her descendants will be enemies. Her child will crush your head, and you will bite his heel. So this verse tells us that the serpent and Adam and Eve were going to have children. They were going to have kids. And at some point, there was going to be a battle. There was going to be a fight where the great, 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 grandson of Adam and Eve would crush the snake's head. But the snake would bite the heel of his foot. And you see, this verse is a prophecy. This is a word from God telling the future waiting for this time when someone will come to defeat the snake and to break the curse. But then we've been waiting for a long time after that because there's been the whole Old Testament, there's been all this history, and all these things happen, and the curse isn't broken, or at least it wasn't yet, because, guys, this world is not fun. I mean, sometimes there's beautiful things and happy things, but there's also pain. There's also a lot of sickness. There's a lot of trouble in this world, and we don't live forever. Right? We don't uh, do everything that's right. And worst of all, when we sin, when we do what's wrong, we separate ourselves from God, from the one who made us and who loves us. We choose death when he wants to give us life. And so this brings us all the way up to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, to the Gospels that tell us the story of when Jesus came. Do you guys remember the story of, of how Jesus was born? Maybe not. Well, first, these angels came along. These angels showed up to Joseph and to Mary. The first angel told, jo told Joseph, hey, you're going to have a son, and his name is going to be Jesus. Jesus means God saves. And he said he's going to have another name, which is called Emmanuel. And Jace, Logan, hey, guys, Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel means that Jesus would be both human and God at the same time, living with his people. God came to live with us. The second angel came to Mary, and 
he told her that he was gonna have, she was going to have a son and that Jesus would be a king, that he would reign over the kingdom of his great-great-great-great-grandfather David and his kingdom would never end. And so th this is it. This is it. The curse is going to be broken. Jesus is the king, the one, God with us, who will break the curse. And then we see Joseph and Mary, they go to Bethlehem. They're getting ready to have Jesus. They can't find any room in any of the inns or hotels. Uh, and so they go to a barn and they look for a place to have Jesus. They have to lay him in a feeding trough for animals. So it's not really the way you would think a king would come into this world. But off in the countryside, there were some shepherds who some angels also appeared to. When the angels show up, the shepherds are like, ah! Angels! They're terrifying to look at! And the angels are like, don't be afraid. It's okay. We come bearing really great news. Good news about your savior, your hero, your king, who has been born in Bethlehem. And then, after they tell the shepherds this, angels fill the sky. And they are all worshiping God, saying, glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth to those with whom they have God's favor. And so the shepherds, they hear this, and they go find Joseph and Mary. And when they see Jesus, see this king the angels told them about, they share everything that Joseph and Mary told them, and they worship Jesus. They praise their king. And as they leave, I'm sure they went and told other people as well. And then a couple of years later, some wise men come by from a very far-off country, some magi. And when they come to Jesus... They, they remember there was a great star in the sky that led them straight to him. And when they find Jesus, they worship him and they give him gifts. And what we see from the angels, from the shepherds, from the wise men, all these people who were waiting for the coming of the king, for Jesus who would break the curse, and as they come before him, they're ready to praise. They're ready to shout and sing and dance with joy because this is the one they've been waiting for forever, <laughs> ever since time began. And so now for us, as we are celebrating Christmas today, celebrating Jesus being born, we have a chance to shout and sing and, and laugh and dance and have fun together knowing our king is here. Our king is alive and he loves us and he's here to break the curse. So my question for us today is will you bow down and worship your king? We fall down, we lay our crowns at the feet of Jesus, the greatness of mercy and love at the feet of Jesus, and we cry.
God. 
All right, so we've already covered how we celebrate Jesus being born at Christmas time, right? And, in fact, and one of the reasons we give gifts is because God gave us the gift of Jesus and the wise men gave gifts to Jesus. But um, hey, Charlie, can I pick on you for just a second? Um, I want to tell you, or have you tell me, if this is good news or bad news. Okay, I'm going to tell you something. Um, so a little while ago, maybe a few months ago, our dog Olive was feeling really, really sick. Our dog, she was throwing up, she was doing other things, if you catch my drift, leaving messes all over the place, and just was having a miserable time. Is that good news or bad news? Yeah, it's pretty bad news. Yeah, our dog wasn't feeling well. She was feeling really sick. But here's the rest of the story. We got her some foods that would be easier for her to eat, that were you know, better on her stomach, and we just took care of her and made sure she was all right, and she got better. In fact, she's back to normal now. Would you say that's good news or bad news? That's good news. You see, when I tell the rest of the story, the first part sounded really sad. Our dog got sick. But the rest of the story lets you know, hey, actually, this is good news because our dog got better, and she's back to normal. And just like with Jesus, it's really good news that he was born. All right, we celebrate that. It's a wonderful thing. But if we never had the rest of the story, if we never saw Jesus grow up and to become the king that he was said to be, then it actually wouldn't be great news. It would just kind of stop. Because babies are great, but babies don't do much. All right? And we need someone who can break the curse. And so what I want to do is share with you three snapshots, three little pictures of how Jesus grew up and the kind of king that he is. So the first point I want to make is that our king is wise. So in Luke chapter 2, this is sometime later after Jesus was born. He was probably 10 to 12, somewhere in there. That's where a lot of people think he would be. And Mary and Joseph and Jesus, they all took this trip to Jerusalem on their holiday called Passover. You know how on Christmas we'll go to travel sometimes and be with family? Well, for Passover, they would also travel, and they'd go to Jerusalem, have this big feast, and do sacrifices and all this stuff. Well, they get going, they head back home, and suddenly they realize, we can't find Jesus anywhere. He's lost. He's, he's gone. Where is our son? And so they go back to Jerusalem, and they're looking around. They can't find him anywhere. Eventually, they go to the temple, and in the temple is Jesus just sitting right there talking to the teachers, asking questions, but also answering some of their questions. And Joseph and Mary are like, Jesus, what are you doing? Don't you know we were looking for you all this time? You were lost. You could have been hurt. And Jesus says, why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? See, Jesus is wise. He knows that he is God's son. He knows that he has something important to do in this world and that he has truth and wisdom to share with other people. In fact, he amazed the teachers with how much he knew. The second story is found in Mark chapter 4, where this is many years later. Jesus is all grown up, and he started going around and preaching and doing miracles. And Jesus is with his disciples. They're all in the boat, and I'm not sure why they went out to sea, but they went out to sea. And while they're out there, this huge storm came up. Right, there was rain, and there was wind, and there were waves. The wind was howling. The waves were crashing. The boat was being tossed everywhere. And the disciples were like, this is it. We can't get out of this storm. We're going to die. Right? They were scared out of, their, uh, out of their minds. And then where's Jesus? Jesus was sleeping in the bottom of the boat. So the disciples go down, and they wake Jesus up, and they say, Lord, don't you care that we are drowning, that we're in danger? Well, Jesus, he gets up and he looks at the wind and the waves and he says, peace, be still. And the wind goes away, the waves become calm and everything is still. And the disciples look at him and they're like, whoa, who is this that even the wind and the waves listen to him? You see, Jesus is God, right? He is God with us and so he is uh, the one who created the heavens and the earth. When Jesus speaks, creation listens. And so our king is powerful. He has power over this world. And then the third point here is that our king is caring. He is loving. In John chapter 11, 
Jesus goes to see his friends, Lazarus and Mary and Martha. But what has happened is Lazarus was sick. And he was so sick that Lazarus died. And Mary and Martha are just, they're really sad and distraught. And when Jesus comes to them, Mary and Martha come up to Jesus and they say, Lord, if you had been here, you could have healed Lazarus. And he'd be here with us right now. And what's interesting is Jesus had a plan. He knew what he was going to do. He was going to raise Lazarus and bring him back from the dead. But he still sees Mary and Martha and he goes up to them. And while they're crying, he cries along with them. As Mary and Martha weep, so does Jesus. And so what we see is that our king, he doesn't like to see us in pain. He doesn't like to see us hurting. He wants to see us healed. He wants to fix this broken world, and he cares about what we're feeling. So we have our king who is wise, who is powerful, and who is caring. And what we see in, in his story, his story doesn't stop at Christmas. Jesus' story didn't stop with, uh, with him being born. It continued. Just like for us, we celebrate around Christmas with fun and food and family. We give gifts to each other, and we, we give to the poor, and we help out people. And we're, we're generous, and we're celebrating all the time, and that's great. But then when Christmas is over, sometimes we'll go back to normal, and there's not as much generosity, not as much kindness. We're not being as loving to each other. And what I want to say is that our story, our Christmas story, it continues beyond Christmas Day. Because Jesus is alive and because he is our king, we can continue to celebrate and be generous and be kind all year round. You see, Jesus' story continues and our response, what we do, gets to continue as well. So I want to ask, with Jesus being your king, is, is he your king today? Is he reigning in your life? And with that, let's continue to sing about who our king is. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Sing aloud to God, let the people shout before his throne. Hallelujah, sing aloud to God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah. To the Lord from the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, from the depths of the sea, let all creation praise His name. From the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, from the depths of the sea, from the depths of the sea, let all creation praise. His name, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, Singing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is the Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Jesus Christ is Lord of all, Lord of all the earth. Clap your hands, all ye people, sing God. With the voice 
Voice of triumph appears. All ye people sing for joy unto the Lord. There's nowhere else that I'd rather be than dancing with you as you sing over me. There's nothing else that I'd rather do, Lord, than to worship you. So rejoice, be glad, rejoice, O my soul, for the Lord, your God, he reigns forevermore, I rejoice, for my God reigns. So rejoice, be glad, your Father and your friend is the Lord, your God, whose will will never end, I rejoice, for my God reigns. Nothing else that I'd rather do, Lord, than to worship you. So rejoice, be glad, rejoice, O my soul, for the Lord your God, He reigns forevermore. I rejoice, for my God reigns. So rejoice, be glad, your Father and your friend is the Lord your God. Whose rule will never end, I rejoice. For my God reigns, my God reigns. And I dance the dance of praise, my God reigns. With a shout I will proclaim, my God reigns. My God reigns, and I will rejoice, for my God reigns. Be seated. Thank you. So where are we in the story? So far we've seen that Jesus was born, and he was born when the whole world was waiting for him. That's what Christmas is about, waiting for our king who will break the curse. And then we saw Jesus grow up to do all these powerful, miraculous things to show that he is caring and to show that he is wise. He knows what is best, and he can do it. He can do for us what we need. He can free us from sin and from death and all the bad things that we face in this broken world. Um, but what we see is that he is our hero. He is like our, our chosen one, the one who will defeat the villain, defeat the forces of evil, and bring us into eternal life with him and with God the Father. But with our heroes, whether they're made up or whether they're real, sometimes we get really nervous when our heroes are trapped. Like I think about heroes like Sonic, or Spider-Man, or Superman, or Batman, or Wonder Woman. When these heroes are trapped by the bad guys, when they're being attacked by the villains, we get nervous because are they going to win, right? Are they going to make it through? Will the forces of evil beat them? And you see, not everyone wanted Jesus to be their hero. Not everyone wanted him to be their king. See, remember when Adam and Eve ate from the fruit and they decided what was good and bad for themselves? They made themselves a type of king even though God is the best king. And that's what we do whenever we sin. We think, hey, I'm going to be a better king. I could decide for myself what's right and what's wrong. And that's what the forces of evil started to do uh, when they were attacking Jesus. You see, when Jesus was a baby, there was a, a human king, King Herod, who wanted to kill Jesus as a baby. 
And in fact, a lot of other babies died while he was trying to get to Jesus. When Jesus grew up, there were these people, these Pharisees and Sadducees, who did not like what Jesus was teaching because he was telling them that they were wrong and they were getting religion and believing in God wrong. And so they didn't like that and they wanted to kill Jesus. And all the time in the background, there's been this snake, Satan, the serpent, who's been working to try and tempt Jesus and to get him off track and to make him fail so the story of Jesus can stop. And then this is where we find ourselves, where Jesus has this really, uh, really good friend, this disciple named Judas, and Judas betrays Jesus. He leads these guards to where Jesus is praying, and Jesus becomes arrested. He's taken by the guards, and they try him as a criminal. They tell lies about him, saying that he did all these bad things, and he should be killed for it. And all, all the officials want him dead, and so he is flogged, he's whipped, beaten, tortured, he's mocked. People are making fun of him, and you know Jesus is in a very bad state. And then eventually they take his hands and his feet, and they nail him to a wooden cross, and they lift him up high so that he is trouble breathing. And eventually Jesus just is, is breathing and breathing and then no more. He breathes his last breath. And guys, in this part of the story, Jesus dies. It looks like the villains won. It looks like the hero lost, like the forces of evil had won. And imagine how everyone else felt. They were waiting for this king, waiting for Jesus who would free us from the curse, who would never die, who would be victorious. But then to watch him be killed... It's like all their hopes and dreams and waiting were for nothing. It looked like the story was over. When he was placed in the tomb and the stone was sealed and his body was in there, all the disciples ran. They scattered because they were afraid. They were afraid they would be killed too, and it just seemed like the end. However, we know there's more to the story. There's a new beginning to this story because on Sunday... Sunday morning, these women were going to Jesus' tomb, and they were going to go because they wanted to take care of his body and wrap it and honor him in that way. And as they're going to the, the tomb, they saw, wait a, wait a second, the stone had been rolled away. The tomb was open, but there's no Jesus. I, we can't find his body in there. And in fact, there were these angels that showed up. And again, it's like, ah, angels, because angels are always looking scary. But the angel said, don't be afraid. Jesus isn't here. Why are you looking for him here? He told you that he was going to come back to life. Jesus had said before he ever went to the cross that he would come back from death and he would be alive eternally. And the disciples were like, oh, okay. They didn't really understand. But now the women saw it firsthand. And as they went away from the tomb, who shows up but Jesus? He shows up in the flesh. They can touch him and they know he's real. He's really alive. He's really beaten sin, beaten death. He really beat the serpent. He crushed the head of the snake. And so then he shows up to more disciples and more disciples and they see that he's real. And he then invites them into his story. In John chapter 20, verse 21, Jesus shows up and he says, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. God the Father sent Jesus to live among humans and to show them his love, to show them his goodness, his wisdom, his power, and also to tell them, to teach them how to follow him. And so now he says, hey, just as I was sent, I'm sending you. You get to go and live in your families, with your friends, uh, with people that you know, and you get to show them my love, show them my story, and tell them my story. And all of this, what Jesus did, and now how we're part of the story, is why we take communion. When we take communion, we have the bread. It looks like a little cracker when we take that. The bread reminds us of Jesus' body that he gave for us. And then the cup, the, the grape juice, reminds us of his blood that was shed so that we could be forgiven. Jesus was a sacrifice that stood in our place so we could be saved. Um, actually, uh, Healy, if I could have my communion cup, please. 
Thank you. Um, so with the bread and the cup, as we take this, we remember what Jesus did. We remember the story that he told and the story that he lived. We remember how he died but also came back to life. And as we remember, we can encourage each other to say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe in his story and what he's done for me and is now doing because he's now alive. So we have this chance to, as we take communion, share the story with each other and know that we can share it throughout the world. As we take the bread, let's go ahead and, and pray over this and remember what Jesus has done. Lord, we thank you for your, your wonderful goodness, for your glory, for your power, especially for your love. We thank you that Jesus loved us so much that he came to this world to die, to do the hardest of things, to face the most suffering. But he did that knowing he would come back to life and that he could also give us the chance to live forever with him. So we thank you for him. We thank you for his sacrifice and for his body that was beaten on our behalf. May we take this now remembering what Jesus has done. Amen. As we pray over the cup, let's also remember the blood that Jesus gave and the pain he went through, but also the victory that he had on Sunday morning. Let's pray. Lord, the blood that you've given for us, um, the, the pain that you've gone through, the suffering you've endured, um, sometimes it, it's hard to think about. But Lord, it, we thank you so much that you did all of that out of love. You did all of that trusting in God to save you and to bring you back to life again. And so, Lord, we thank you that we can now trust you because even through death, you bring life. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every Sunday, we also have a time where we get to offer something. We get, get to give something back. And one of the reasons we do this, Scripture says that we give because God first gave to us. Remember that he's given us so many things, especially the gift of his son Jesus. But think about it. When you breathe, that's from God. Your houses are from God. Your food, your water, the, the money that we have, our friends and our family, all of that is from God. And so he's always giving to us. So now we have a chance to give of some of our money. So we can help out the church and help out the kingdom. But we also have a chance every day to give of our time, our lives, to give love and kindness to other people. And so just as we give, I'm going to say a prayer over the, over the offering. But as we give, just remember that God first gave to us. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for how much you've given. Your mercies are new every morning, and they are great mercies. You've given us so much to be thankful for, and I pray that we would be thankful, not just in this moment as we give, but every moment of every day. Help us to give uh, our lives to you, to bring glory to you, and I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. So wrapping up this story, we've seen how Jesus was born as the king. He grew up as the king, and even though he was killed, he came back to life as our king, who can break the curse, who did break the curse and who offers us eternal life with him now. And what I want us to remember is that we are a part of that story. Just as the story is more than Christmas, it's more than Easter, it's more than uh, everything we see in scripture, it continues even today and we are a part of it. So what I want to ask is, do you see yourself as part of the story of Jesus? As we celebrate Christmas and go throughout our new year, ask him what it means to really follow him and to share his story with others. Let's stand, let's sing.
his love that came for us humble to a sinner's cross you broke my shame and sinfulness rose again victorious As we walk away from this service, it's been our prayer for you is that you've been blessed and you've been encouraged that you would walk in the arrival of Jesus Christ. Because as Sam pointed out, Christmas is not an event. It's the beginning of a new reality. That just as one came born to die, we have been reborn. That we would give our life every single day to the cause of Christ. So we'd like to say a prayer over you that are here and those of you who've joined us online as you walk away and you enjoy the rest of your Merry Christmas. Let's go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your Son, for the life that was given, all of your grace wrapped up in one little face that showed up early one morning. And Father, it was the beginning of a whole new reality. Father, we are those who believe in the name of Jesus, that he came, he lived, and he died, and he died for a purpose. But death could not hold him, the grave could not keep him. Father, he has been resurrected anew, and Father, we have hope. As we go about this Christmas day, I would ask that your spirit would dwell in every single person that calls upon your name. Father, that it would be clear to everyone who comes in contact with your people that there is a God and he is alive. And that you are doing a work in this place, not just during Christmas, but every single day of the year. Lord, we love you. May your spirit lead us. 
It's in your son's precious and holy name we pray and the church said, amen. Thanks for being here, y'all. Blessings.